Uh, this is the feedback video for the uh, engine 3 assessment, which was uh, so cells and biological molecules. Starting off, start off with a comprehension question. These can be tricky, but if you learn or practice how to get the information that you're given and apply it to the question, then they become a lot easier. I've highlighted the key bits of information that you needed to answer the questions um, from here. So you needed to be aware that uh, to answer the question, you need to be aware that hemicellulose is made from five carbon pentose sugars. You need to know that hemicellulose is a polymer, so it's also a carbo uh, hemicellulose is a carbohydrate. And you need to know for a, a later questions as well that you heat between 80 and 90 degrees to remove the water. Um, and, and you know you've got all the water removed when you've got a constant mass. So they're the bits of information you need from the text. For this first question here, um, one way which is similar, now a lot of uh, people said uh, that they made up from monomers, well they are both polymers, but that's not quite enough. Because they're both carbohydrates, they're made from sugar monomers. So they're both made from sugar monomers. Um, this question here, Quite a few students were saying things other than to do with their structure, like one acts as cement and the other doesn't. That's not a structural difference. So you're looking for things like hemicellulose is made from uh, pentose sugars, so uh, sugars that have got five carbons in. Cellulose is made from sugars with six carbons in because you know it's made from beta glucose. Um, so you could have size, so hemicellulose is smaller, cellulose is, is bigger. They again, for question C, using the information that I went through in the text. Question D, quite disappointed with, with the answer to this. And a lot of students not getting across the idea that the lignin will not be able to fit into the active site of cellulase because in enzymes have a specific shape. So lignin, because it's a different shape, it's not complementary to the shape of the active site, um, of cellulase, so it cannot fit into the active site. So that word fit is quite important, and make sure you say active sites, not enzymes. Um, question E, a number of students that didn't get six marks, and there's no reason why not. You have to practice your long answer questions over and over before every assessment, so you'll be making sure you're at least covering the basics. So long answer questions, make sure you get detail in. To answer this question, you had to be aware that we're talking about a DNA molecule here. So these are DNA nucleotides, um, not generic nucleotides. So the sugar, you can't say pentose sugar, it's got to be deoxyribose. I'd say this question is the hardest one on the paper, um, this and the next one, C and D. So for this one here, you've got to make the link the idea that these are what's adding, the enzymes that are adding the nucleotides along. So the, the enzyme would have run along the strands in that direction, uh, extending and adding nucleotides, joining nucleotides together in the new strand. So that has to be DNA polymerase. If it were DNA helicase, you would see the enzyme here splitting the strands up. So the, the helicase is kind of like the bit on a, on a zip where before you've unzipped, they're joined together, and after you've unzipped, they're apart. Um, so helicase would be found there if it were helicase. This question was pretty tricky. Um, so first of all, you've got to, two parts to the question. So running in opposite directions. So how do you know it runs in opposite directions? Well, DNA is anti-parallel. So on one, so that's one mark. Second mark, the nucleotides will be po pointing in different the angle differently or that they are, the shape of them is different depending on which strand they're on. So the shape is different here because the pointy bit is pointing in that direction and on the opposite strand the pointy bit will be pointing in this direction um, that way. So the nucleotides are pointing in, in different directions. So that's the first two marks. Linking it into knowledge of enzyme action we should be talking about active sites. Um, so the idea that the active site is a specific oops, wrong thing there. Um, the idea that the active site is a specific specific what's it doing? That's better. Working now. Um, so the idea that the active site is a specific shape. So the active site here can bind to this part of the nucleotide, but it could not bind to this part of the nucleotide. So 
because Arc ends as of a specific shaped active site, so only uh, substrates with a complementary shape can fit into the specific shaped active site. Again, the word fit into. So, uh, as I said, the pointy bit uh, can only fit into the active site, for example. And if the nucleotides were pointing the same way around, then the diagram would look different. Nothing really of note to say about this page. The question here is really asking, um, so why has the starch disappeared? So starch, you see, is broken down by amylase. So that's exactly what's happened here. The fungus has secreted the enzyme amylase and it's digested. It's broken down the starch into maltose, which of course does not turn blue-black. This question here, really you're asking, so think of a reason why the enzyme might not be work or why it might not be present. So it might not be present because the fungus could be dead. The enzyme might not work because the enzyme is denatured. This question was, was, I think everybody got that one, but this one here is still quite a few mistakes being made and quite a bit of confusion where two graphs that, graphs that look exactly the same apart from the different labels on the axes. So this levels off because over time the substrate is getting used up, so it's being converted into product. So as there's less concent uh, lower concentration of substrate, there'll be fewer collisions, uh, there'll be less enzyme substrate complexes. So as this line gets less deep, the rate is decreasing. This is a completely different answer to this question. You've got rate up the side, not the amount of maltose, not the amount of product. So rate up the side. So this is the maximum rate here. So how could that possibly be um, the explanation for why the reaction gets slower? Um, do not confuse the two. So the explanation for this one, maximum rate of reaction, because all the active sites are saturated with substrate at the high substrate concentrations. Do not confuse the two graphs. Just go over, just go over the answer to question C part one um, on this page because this is where the graph is. So on C part one, um, so what happens to as you increase the incubation time, what happens to the rate of reaction? So the as you can see, the one mark one generalised mark for the longer the incubation time, the lower the rate of reaction, because you can see it is underneath. But up until 50 degrees, there's very little effect or there's no effect. Um, so that's something, uh, a mark that you need to get in there. So very little effect up to 50 degrees or no effect, because the lines are pretty much the same steepness. However, there's a big decrease in the rate of reaction the longer you incubate above 50 degrees, a big difference between the two lines there. And then for part two, why might that be the case? Why that might be the case, a lot of people getting the right idea but not getting detailed, just getting the word denature in there. Denature might be written down here. Denature should be in there straight away. So the enzyme is denatured because the fact that it's been in a high temperature for longer, more time for the bonds to break, like hydrogen bonds. Denature the enzyme, actocytes change shape, all refer to number of enzyme substrate complex. If you're talking about the effect of on rate of reaction, in this case, there'll be less enzyme substrate complexes the longer the incubation time. Just one slight thing with this: a lot of students not getting the word "fit" in there. So, if the comp uh, competitive inhibitor uh, binds to the active site or fits into the active site, it prevents the substrate fitting into the active site. Um, the word "fit" is important. A couple of important things we needed to get from this um, figure to be able to answer the question. So what's going to affect the amount of omega-3? It's going to be the diet, okay, so the amount of food that's taken in or the type of food. And um, some of the fatty acids are used for energy. Look at the next question. The wild fish have less uh, omega-3, so it could be something to do with diet. So they might be fed less fat in their diet. Um, or it could be something to do with fats being used up for, for en required for energy. So why might a wild trout be carrying out more respiration? Uh, could be due to the fact that they have to move more to search for food. And the last question here, I've coloured them different colours. It's important that the phosphates are attached to the top of carbon 5. So that is carbon 5, the top of that blue line. So if you've got an oxygen here, so carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the phosphates attached to the top of carbon 5. So it has to be an up, up line attached to the phosphates. It doesn't matter if this ribose is, is the other way around and the up line is here, in which case the phosphates would be there. 
the adenine needs to come off carbon 1, which is either off this side or off that side there.